Hello children. Welcome to this exciting Sunday. It's a new day and we already have it. So, we're going to start with a song which goes like ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, you are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are excellent. We worship you, Lord, because you're wonderful. And you make us sing a song. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, you are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are excellent. We worship you, Lord, because you're wonderful. And you make us sing a song. He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world. In his hands, 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 he's got the, he's got you and me. In his hands, he's got you and me. In his hands, he's got you and me. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the tiny little children. In his hands, he's got the tiny little children. In his hands, he's got the tiny little children. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Let us have a word of prayer. Let's bow down our heads and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you, we come before you, Father, with these children. We ask you, Father, we pray that you may help them, even at home. Even those who did not come to church today, Father, we ask you, Father, to, we, we ask you to help them in everything that they do at home. Oh, good Lord of mercy, we pray that you may help their parents to provide for them. Thank you for everything. Thank you. It is this time of Corona, Father. We ask you to take care of all of us, oh, good Lord of mercy. I ask you, even as we wait to open schools, Father, May you lead us to do the right thing. Thank you. I ask this believing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today's memory verse comes from the book of Psalms chapter 46 verse 1. It says, God is our mighty fortress, always ready to help in times of trouble. Let's say it again. God is our mighty fortress, always ready to help in times of trouble. Thank you. Now, good morning, boys and girls, once more. We are now through our second stage of our Sunday school service this morning. Now, as we proceed, I'm sure you all are learning something. Now, with me, I have Abby, who is going to take us through the Ten Commandments, and I'll do the Apostle Creed. I'm sure from last week, you have been able to memorize one or two, if not all of them. Abby, welcome. Command commandment number one. Put God first. Number two, worship only Him. Number three, no bad words. Number four, work six, rest one. Number five, obey your parents. Number six, harm no one. Number seven, don't cheat. Number eight, if it's not your, don't take it. Number nine, tell the truth. Number ten, don't be jealous of other people's stuff. Abby, thank you very much for the Ten Commandments. I'm sure boys and girls from last week, you might have memorized two or three, if not all of them. Now we are all going to say the Apostle Creed. If you know, kindly say along with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, th on the third day, he arose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, I introduce Teacher Elizabeth, who is going to give us the word. Teacher Elizabeth, welcome. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you? This is your teacher, Elizabeth. Welcome to our class today. Today, our story is from the book of Job. And in this story, we remind ourselves to trust in God in times of trouble. Have your books ready and your Bibles. And our story is going to be taken from Job chapter 1, part of Job chapter 2, and it ends at Job chapter 42. We are not going to read all those today, but a lot of that will be read by you in the course of the week. So let us pray to begin our session. When I pray, I close my eyes, I bow my head, I put my hands together, and I'm ready to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, for the privilege to be here. I thank you, God, because you're a good God. And I thank you because you have given us life. Bless us this day and open our minds so that we understand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, in the story of Job, in chapter 1, we are going to look at verse 1 to 22. In chapter 2, we shall mention something in verse 7 to, to the end. And uh, then 42, of course, will mention something, but you can read the story yourself at the end of this. Now, Job lived in the land of Uz. Job was an upright man. He was known in the whole area that he was the most upright man, the most blameless man, very patient man, man of great integrity, and he loved God. We look at chapter 1, verse 1. He lived in the land of Uz, and Job feared God, and he was rich. And he had a big family of ten children, seven sons and three daughters. And he was rich. He had 500 oxen, 500 donkeys, 7,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camels. I only have two dogs. I don't know how many you have, but he was rich, very, very rich. If we look at verse 6, from verse 6 we see there up to verse 12, one day the, the, the devil ch challenged God and told God that Job loves you because of the blessings you gave him. And if you strike all the blessings, he's going to curse you. And so we see in the Bible there, verse 7, verse 12, the Lord tells Satan that you can do what you want, you can have everything he has, but don't touch him. And he goes out and does that. Now, one day when Job's children were having a party, something happens. Let us look at verse 14. When that was happening, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby. And Sabines came and carried them off. And they killed the rest of the servants and I remained there. And so I came and told you. While he was still listening, another one came and told them that we were out there in the fields and a fire, the fire of God fell from the sky and it burnt up the sheep, 7,000 sheep gone. As he was still listening, another servant came and said, the Chaldeans raided them and they carried off the camels. The fourth one came and told him, now your children have all died. The building collapsed on them. Problems after problem, suffering after suffering, all his children died. Job, was, you can imagine, Job was shocked. And what he did, you look at this, he got up, he tore his clothes, he shaved his head, and he fell on the ground and worshipped God. And the verse 22 ends by saying, in all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. He did not blame God for anything. He continues staying faithful and trusting in God. If you look at chapter 2, the devil went back. And when he went back, he told God, no, you just didn't touch him. If you touch him, he's going to curse you. And God said, okay, you go, but don't kill him. And what happened is that Job was struck with boils all over, boils with pus all over. And they were itchy and Job was walking around scratching himself. And his wife saw it and he told him, 
Why don't you cast God? Why are you continuing to be have this integrity? And he continued in all this, still Job did not give up on God. His wife even abandoned him, and he remained with his friends. And his friends would sit with him and cry with him if you look at that. And if you read the story of Job, their friends did not make it any easier. Instead, they accused him and abused him and told him to disregard God's story. But Job remained faithful in all this. Job did not sin in all this. At the end, we see in verse 42 that Job was restored. Everything he had was returned double-fold. He was healed, restored, and we learn many things from this lesson. That Job went through problems, big, big problems, but he continued trusting in God. And when we trust in God, then when we have problems, we see that all the problems that we have, usually God knows. We should trust in God. They are for a purpose. For Job, it was for the purpose to test him. For you, there can be a purpose because of something else. Do not be scared when you have a problem. Continue trusting in God. And the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always, even if you have a problem. What else do we learn from this story? We also learn from this story that be careful of the friends that you have and the people, even family members. You can have a problem and people keep telling you things to discourage you from God. Continue to look unto God and trust in God even if other people do not believe in it. Now, we also see that when we suffer, I have said it is for a reason. Now, after Job suffered, he was blessed. Now, many years ago, or many years later, our Lord Jesus Christ also suffered. He was blamed, he was beaten, he was killed. And at the end of it, we are the ones who got blessed. Because of the, the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ, the whole world has been blessed. Because of his death and his resurrection, he provided a way for us to have a relationship with God. Because of him, we got salvation. What are we saying? That suffering is for a reason, and we have to keep trusting in God. Last week, Teacher Braxton talked about Jesus Christ is the way. He's the light, and he's the light because of this suffering. The whole world came to know God, and he has shown us the way to have a relationship with God. So once again, I want you to remember that no matter what happens, no matter what suffering you go through, remember that God always overcomes evil. What is our memory verse today? So our memory verse today comes from Psalms chapter 46, verses 1. It says, God is our mighty fortress, always ready to help in terms of trouble. God is our mighty fortress always ready to help in terms of in times of trouble Psalms chapter 46 verse 1 god is our mighty fortress always ready to help in terms of trouble let me try Ch uh, psalms chapter 46 verse 1 it says god is our mighty fortress always ready to help in times of trouble yay i got it god is our is our fortress let us not forget ready to help in terms of trouble. Let us have some small Bible trivia. Only five questions and you mark yourself. If you get each question right, it is two marks. You mark yourself out of ten. Try. Number one. God caused Job's suffering. True or false? Write T or F. God caused Job's suffering. True or false? Number two. Job remained faithful to God. Job remained faithful to God. True or false? Job remained faithful to God. True or false? Either write T or F. Number three, Job blamed God. Job blamed God. True or false? Number four, we will all have troubles in life one day. Sad. We will all have troubles in life one day. True or false? The last one. God rewarded Job. True or false? God rewarded Job. True or false? True 
or false? God rewarded Job. True or false? We have five. Number one is false. Number two is true. God remained faithful. Job remained faithful to God. Number one, God caused Job suffering. It is false. It is the devil. Number three, Job blamed God. That is false. He did not. He was faithful. Number four, we will all have troubles in life. Sadly, that is true. But remember to trust in God always. And the last one is true, that God rewarded Job. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. I hope you have a great week ahead. I want to give you some homework always. Remember to go through chapter Job chapter 1, chapter 2, and verse 42 with your family when you're reading. Now, I have only two questions. Number one, how many camels, oxen, donkeys, and sheep did Job get? Can you calculate how many camels, oxen, donkeys, and sheep did Job get when God re returned his, 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 his property, when God restored him, when God, after he got healed, when he things were returned to him? How many camels, oxen, donkeys, and, and sheep did he get? I have another question which you can discuss with your parents. In this story, who is it you don't like and why? Tell your parents. Have a great week ahead and be positive. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this day again. Once again, we thank you because we have learned. I pray for these children. May they continue to be strong. May they continue to know that you are a good God and that you, you have won over evil. Lord, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ who suffered on the cross for us and has shown us the way. He has opened the way for us and that he always is our direction and our light. Bless our families, bless our parents. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks and bye. See you next week. Wow, Teacher Sheila. Wow. You can, you can see how the, the day has been. We've enjoyed ourselves with the children. Yes, we have. And we have to be one meter apart, staying safe even exactly. when we are in church. Yeah, exactly. That is how it is. So, Teacher Sheila, if you were Job, how, how do you think Job would be feeling like? Or how would you feel? Problems after problems, you lose your animals. First of all, how many animals do you have? I don't even have. I have nothing. I have two dogs, but this man had thousands of of flock and he lost everything and very many children a very sad day how would you feel i would feel so bad as teacher sheila i would actually feel very bad about everything that happened in job's life but uh, we are grateful that we have at least learned something we have learned that uh, job was very faithful he was faithful to god and uh, he followed god's ways and that is exactly what i've learned and uh, right now, I'm a changed person, and I would feel the same way. Okay, that is how it was with Job. And children, last week we had some small questions for you, uh, only three, which we asked you to go and read the book of Job and give us. Question number one, I asked, Job lived in the land of Dash. Which land did he live in, Teacher Sheila? Have you answered? Yes, he lived in the land of Uz. Uz. Or as, Uz the or way others as, call it. Yes. That is where he lived, in the land of us. And then, how many, how big wa was his family? How many children did he have? I hope you have answered. Yes. He had ten children. Ten children. Three daughters. Three daughters and seven sons. A very blessed man indeed. Now, looking at it, we talked about his animals. He had many animals. How many animals did he have? We asked, what did he lose? He lost his children and he lost animals. How many animals? 500 donkeys, 500 oxen. And remember, they have not mentioned the cows. So he had very, very many animals. What about the camels? There were how many? He had 3,000 camels. Mm -hmm. And sheep? And he had 7,000 sheep. Wow. What a rich man. 
and after losing everything he had hope in God let us keep up and not lose trust in God even when we have problems now teacher Sheila you are the teacher next week what is happening next week next week I'll have the lesson I'll go through the lesson I'll teach you the lesson it will be on Jonah Jonah chapter 1 verses 1 to 17 I'll repeat that again it will be on Jonah chapter 1 verses 1 to 17 and I'm going to talk about Jonah so meanwhile uh, think about this go through it go to read your Bible I'll give you a challenge I'm asking you these three questions one where was Jonah sent by God where was Jonah sent question number two how many days did Jonah uh, stay in the fish's stomach how many days was Jonah in the fish's stomach the whale well. number three did the people listen to Jonah when he went to speak to, to them the people of Nineveh did they listen to Jonah mm -hmm. in the long run so see you next Sunday so we see you next Sunday as we say bye. We are going to finish with a grace and then we will put on our masks to remember that we are supposed to stay safe wherever we are. Okay? Yes. And the grace? And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. 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 So bye. And have a great week ahead. Let's put on our masks. Don't forget, put them on properly. Okay?